Hey everyone, Bethany Wilson here with Rough Beginnings Rehab with one of my rants with love. Now, the reason I always say with love is because, well, I can get a little passionate about certain issues and sound downright mean. So, you all have to know that it comes from a place where I'm just trying to inform for anyone who wants to know, okay? So this one is about choosing the right dog breed. Or, or breed mix, you know, even, even at a shelter. Um, if I get distracted at all, I've got a brand newbie. This is his first walk on an e-collar heel, and we're about 30 minutes in, so he's in a pretty good zen place, but you never know if we see a dog, we're in trouble. So if I seem distracted, that's why, because that's what he's here for, is leash aggression. All right, so we're a little over halfway through the year, and before I know it, I'm gonna get, be getting calls about advice for getting puppies or new dogs in general, um, dogs under two years old because of Christmas, because of the holidays coming up. And then I'll be nice and busy next year after people have spent a month with their puppy and they've had it. <laughs> I always look forward to that. Um, so I just wanted to give a few tips on choosing the right breed for your family. So if you're not going to a shelter and picking up an older dog, like what I mean by older it doesn't have to be, you know, five years old. It just has to be, thank you, <laughs> let's go. It just has to be a dog that is uh, like under six months old is what I'm talking about specifically. Um, because that can be really tricky as far as picking temperament. There's a lot of things you can do with puppies, whether it's from a breeder or at a rescue or shelter to kind of know the temperament, but those temperaments change, guys. When dogs hit adolescence, between six, sometimes five months, um, a few dogs I've met, even four months old, they can display some serious issues. And then as that dog gets to be a year, year and a half, those hormones kick in, doesn't matter if he's been neutered or spayed, it really doesn't. Um, you can see a completely different type of dog. I mean, completely. Like you, you go from sweet, you know, fluff ball that loves everybody and everything to a Cujo. No joke. Um, it can happen. I've seen it happen lots of times. So let's talk about <laughs> uh, uh, picking the right breed. Thanks to the internet, there is no reason that someone should get a dog without doing a ton of research on the type of dog they think they want. Okay, so if I'm, for instance, if I'm, and I do have a few people in mind when I mention off a few of these that I've come across in the last year, if I mention a Yorkshire Terrier, for instance, people think really cute dog, right? That's what, that's what the instinct is, is really, CP behaves, <laughs> really cute, um, you know, lovable house dog. It's a terrier. If you guys know what they're bred for, if you guys know um, anything about their history, it's a terrier, okay? So when, when we don't have dogs that are, that are running around catching mice and you know, finding you know, hidey holes and bugs and just trying to search for anything they can get their hands on, when you don't nurture that aspect of them, you can get a lot of anxiety issues. And terriers are known for anxiety issues anyway for a number of different reasons, I won't go into it. But, um, but then you, you take away what their, their genetics tell them to do and you can really have a handful of a dog on your hands. And uh, you can go online, type in, you, in YouTube and type in Yorkshire Terrier and you see these dogs doing amazing things and agility and stuff like that. They are not cute little um, lap dogs. Are there exceptions? Of course there are exceptions, but I just wanna get away from the stigma of you know getting a small dog and it being able to just be happy hanging around in the living room all day with maybe a little bit of play and maybe a short walk. A lot of times, good job, buddy. A lot of times that is not the case at all, okay? So if you're looking into any terrier breed, you better do some research on it. There are some terriers out there like ground, go to ground terriers um, that are bred to dig holes, bred to get bit and keep on going um, that, that you need to know about. There are even some terriers where you look at articles online from people who have been breeding them for years 
and they'll come right out and say, sometimes these dogs tend to not be good with other dogs. Sometimes these dogs are natural resource guarders, which means guarding food and guarding toys, which can, can cause major issues in the home. You gotta know what you're getting into, guys. These are hundreds of years of genetics bred into these dogs. Um, so another example, I got one more, just to kind of, oh, I was gonna use Huskies, but I think instead I'm gonna use German Shepherds and Malinois. Now those are two very different breeds, in my opinion. In my opinion, you, you have the Malinois, which is like a crazy neurotic border collie. And then you have the German Shepherd, which is like German Shepherd to Malinois is like Australian Shepherd to border collie. It's, it's a little bit milder of a version. Not all the time. I mean, there are always exceptions, but that's a generalization. So you gotta know what you're getting into. Um, Malinois energy is unending. It is, it is, it is unending. The, the, you put a challenge in front of them. Let's go, bud. Come on. You put a challenge in front of them. Oh, for, okay. Speaking of a challenge. <laughs> All right, let's go, bud. Go, boy. Come on. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, you put a challenge in front of them. And even if it's like a correction, even if it's like, I don't do that, they're like, hmm, how do I get around this? How do I figure out how to get things done my way? It's not even necessarily dominance. It's not what I'm talking about. It's just energy and drive. <laughs> These dogs can be so challenging. I get probably German Shepherds the most because Malinois aren't as um, common for people to pick up for family dogs. But German Shepherds are. And I mean, I get so many emails, four, five, six months old. The dogs are actually breaking open skin and they're not aggressive. They're just crazy puppy driven and they're not doing near enough because they got their dog from a breeder or maybe like if you get a dog from a breeder you better believe it ought to be a, a drivey dog unless you go to a breeder that specifically tries to breed for lower key family dogs um, and they do they do exist we we ran into a border collie breeder uh, a while back my husband did and she specifically has done um, a mix with English collies, border collies, um, English shepherds, excuse me, English shepherds to kind of dumb down the drive a little bit so they can be more family oriented, but yet they're still border collies. It's like something that was done a long time ago. And then you breed a calm border collie with another calm border collie. Anyway, I won't get into it, but my point is you got to look for that kind of stuff, guys. We got the holidays coming up. And it's always a time where people are looking to get puppies and different breeds. You need to know what they're bred for. You need to know what they're capable of. Any dog can bite, but when you're getting, like for instance, this guy is a perfect example. He's a sweet, oh, hang on. Let's go. No, no, good boy. It's our first dog. Let's slow down. Any dog is sweet. This one is a perfect example. He is a sweet family dog, low key French bulldog. But then he got attacked by another dog and now he's not only aggressive and nervous and anxious, but he doesn't take direction well. He's a stubborn bully breed. Now I'm not saying all French bulldogs don't take direction well or all bulldogs, but bulldogs tend to have <laughs> obsessive issues. It's not uncommon. I come across it all the time. Every bulldog I get has at least one obsessive issues um, or severe nervous issues. Well, for him, he's just really stubborn. He's not taking direction well, but he will. My point is, is that you gotta, you gotta know what you could be getting into. You've got to know what could happen. People should be doing classes, puppy classes, the first year and a half of that puppy's life because a lot of times they do puppy socialization classes and they think it ends there and then I get the call a year later you know he's starting to pull bark do these things on the leash and then I'm like okay we need to get this taken care of now we need to do a board and train oh well he's not that bad yet I don't think we need to do a full board and train I'm like okay that's up to you but I'm just I'm telling you, this is what could happen. This is what I see happen all the time. A lot of those people call me back six months to a year later. 
my dog finally bit someone or my dog finally got kicked out of daycare for going after another dog. So, you know, I'm, I'm just want to, and, and it could be Labradors, it could be anything. Labradors have a lot of excitement drive, which can get them in a lot of trouble. You just gotta, you just gotta know your dog. Don't just watch a couple videos and read a few articles. Do some serious research on what your dog or type of dog you're looking into was bred for. That's all I ask. That's all I ask. Because if you do that, if you do that, you'll be way ahead of the game. I recently had a client that did a ton of research on training, different training methods, ways to go about training dogs, and then got a dog, got a puppy, but didn't do really any research on the breed that they got. They thought that they, they were doing good, like these aren't irresponsible owners, but they, they missed the mark. They missed the mark and they got the wrong breed for their family really wrong breed for their family and they got it from a breeder which means <laughs> which man a uh, uh, champion line which means high high drive and I know this doesn't apply to everybody but I live in the city I live in Los Angeles especially if you're in a city environment and you're not on a farm or a ranch or a place with a lot of space your work is doubled or if not more your work is doubled I've got a border collie in the city my work is doubled, all right? Now he's very well trained. He's actually, there. it's a border collie, right? So he's got, he's like one of the most well-trained dogs I've ever had. I grew up with Aussies who were really well-trained and Dusty is even better just because of his instincts of, of wanting to do, you know, everything. So, <laughs> so that's a great part of him, right? But also that comes with a negative, that comes with a lot of drive and a lot of maintenance and a lot of exercise, it's a lot. So just letting you guys know, <laughs> just letting you guys know, when you pick out your puppy, do your research on the breed or breed mix that, that you're looking into, definitely, and you'll be way ahead of the game uh, than most people. So you're ready. I want you guys to be ready. I, I, I get so sad when all these people are so shocked that their puppy did this or that their puppy did that, and they're only, you know, six, you know five, six, seven, eight months old. Um, it, it's, it can be really tough. It can be really tough. All right, guys, I hope that helps. And uh, yeah, talk to you later.